because now we are moving on to what's already um, the final presentation of this morning. And this presentation, it's, it's a nice one to have at the end because it's rather broad, I think, in scope, and it ties together quite a few of the issues and um, uh, um, rights that have been mentioned so far. It's on the link between the right for development, the right for a clean and healthy environment, and the essentiality of including these rights in a national constitution. I understand that um, at the moment there is no specific environmental provision uh, in the Sri Lankan constitution. I'm sure that Ms. Pereira is going to um, expound on this. Uh, Ms. Pereira is um, a demonstrator in business statistics and she is attached to the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences at the University of, and I'm going to leave this for you, at the University of... She's from the University of uh, Sri Jayavadanapura. There you go. <laughs> um, she is also a final year undergraduate uh, in the LLB program at uh, the Open University of Sri Lanka. Um, so I welcome now to the uh, podium uh, Ms. Pereira. Thank you, madam. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Sandamali Mashka Pereira from University of Shujawadhanapura. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Dr. Charita Gunasekar and other members of uh, organized this event. And uh, I appreciate to accept my research paper and give this great opportunity to me. And uh, so thanks again. OK, then I'm going to my topic. Uh, my topic is the link between right for development, uh, right for clean and healthy environment, and essentiality of including these rights in national constitutions. Uh, I start my presentation uh, from Mahatma Gandhi's statement. He has said, uh, there is enough on earth for everybody's need, but not for everybody's greed. Actually, it is a correct because today people use every single spaces to their development projects such as housing complex, uh, shopping malls, and etc. Uh, people have not limit to succeed their needs. Therefore, when people are going to achieve their needs, uh, they forget about uh, natural environment. As a result of that, environment pollution problems have arisen daily. So I'm going to talk about these cases through my presentation. I categorize my presentation like this. Uh, what is human rights? Human rights are the rights that all people have by virtue of being human beings. Uh, fundamental rights are a group of rights that have been recognized by the Supreme Court as requiring a high degree of protection from government encroachment. Uh, these rights are specifically identified in the Constitution. Uh, Magna Carta, Thomas Aquinas Theory, uh, then French Declaration, uh, United States uh, Bill of Rights as the declares these fundamental human rights. Uh, 1978 Constitution uh, that include uh, the third chapter, Articles 10 to 17, uh, concern about this uh, uh, fundamental human rights, Article uh, 126, which emphasizes national standards of human rights, uh, as well as uh, according to the Article 4D, government have a prominent responsibility to stability and protection of fundamental human rights. Anyway, uh, these provisions for human rights are notable, incomplete, and ought to be amended for a number of reasons. I will discuss this later. Before global industrialization, the scope of human needs in the world was fairly limited. However, uh, human demands vastly expanded with the advent of population growth and the competitiveness of a global economy. As a result, global problems have arisen such as uh, ozone depletion, uh, sea level rise, climate change, and etc. These problems threaten the health of human beings and direct and indirect threats to the economic productivity of nations. Then I'm uh, moving on to the right to clean and healthy environment. All human beings depend on the environment, a safe, 
clean, healthy and sustainable environment is integral to the full enjoyment of a wide range of human rights. Without a healthy environment, we are unable to fulfill our aspirations or even live at a level commensurate with minimum standards of human dignity. Lots of advocates, organizations defines the importance of this right. Dalai Lama is one of them. That uh, the right to clean and healthy environment, is it human right or is it a uh, constitutional right? According to the international law, it is a human right, but some legal advocates uh, argue that uh, it is not only human right, but also constitutional right. Article 35 in South Korean Constitution, Article 45 in Spanish Constitution, 225 Brazilian, uh, 56 Turkish, 42 Russian, uh, according to that uh, uh, countries uh, include that this right to their constitutions. Uh, common law countries, uh, common law status use environmental right by defining other fundamental right combined with environment. So these are some examples, these cases uh, would manifest that statement. Uh, Deshan Harendra and Ceylon Electricity Board case, Sri Lankan case, also manifest that early statement. Uh, in this case, uh, it was decided to com compensate the people and close down the power plant to protect the rights of the people to live in a healthy environment. Uh, now let's move on to the right to development. All humans should have the right for development. Every development project appertain the right to development and right to clean and healthy environment. So therefore it must need a balance. Sustainable development is the best solution for it and it is the most popular topic in this century. Sustainable development notices the needs of future generations as well as current generation. Broadland Commission, Rio Declaration and many other convention advocates define this topic. According to uh, this book written by Georgie Hardy, Diana and David, they mention about uh, st components of st sustainable development, uh, minimizing use of non-renewable resources, sustainable use of renewable resources, keeping within absorptive capacity of local and global sinks for waste and uh, meeting human needs. Those are the main components of the sustainable development. If person, institution or government doing some sustainable development project, parallelly they have to make environmental effect evaluation report including analysis of environmental cost and returns. According to this report, they have to concern about the place of development project is done, social threats, duration of projects, commercial development issues and make a balance of development of development and environment. In Slovakia case, Viramantri just decided government must concern economic and environment factors and necessity of sustainable development. And uh, Vellaru Citizens Welfare Forum case, uh, Tuldeep just decided, uh, he had emphasized sustainable development is an essential concept. Uh, in Narmada Bacho case, there will be an enormous economic crisis and the poverty will be increased due to the economic crisis mentioned above and the environmental pollution will have occurred. Uh, therefore, court had been given the decision to construct the dam. And uh, Nayama Devi case, the state government proved that the objective of building the biological park is to protect the forest and biodiversity. Therefore, the court approved that project. Now I am moving to uh, in Sri Lankan cases, uh, in Kandalama case, uh, that private hotel made under the naturalism. Therefore, they concern about sustainable policy. So uh, they made it with the minimum damage to the environment. So court gave this pr uh, gave permit to done it. But uh, Ambilipity Paper Factory case, they are not concerned about sustainable policy because untreated black liquor was released to the Wallaby Lake, which was a waste from the production. 
uh, and summon a level project and another example they uh, destroying an area with large biological diversity so uh, can we think uh, it uh, they're not concerned about sustainable policy and these days uh, talking about umaya project it also some one of example uh, that not concerning about sustainable policy and hambantote airport airport case uh, that uh, without adopting sustainable policy because of the bio uh, damage to biodiversity of the area and uh, I am on the Epaul case in Amar Singh Justice uh, said the essentiality of sustainable development and that project was uh, not done because of uh, their concern about sustainable policy. And Upper Kotmale project, uh, they are uh, they also not concerning about uh, sustainable policy, uh, therefore, that uh, waterfalls in figure uh, face lack of waters. Uh, how is Colombo Port City project? It, uh, currently, we are talking. Uh, it is a question. So I am come for the, my findings. Uh, the third chapter of the Constitution in 1978, I said earlier, ought to be amended because the chapter itself has not been updated in more than four decades in light of dramatic changes in Sri Lanka and uh, the chapter is not a comprehensive framework and leaves many areas for improvement in the insurance of basic human rights in Sri Lanka. And the 15th and 16th sentences of the chapter offer concessions to undermine the absolute preservation of these human rights. And in comparison to other status, Sri Lanka offers significantly fewer constitutional protections of human rights. And the country doesn't ensure the basic human right to a clean and healthy environment and instead focuses exclusively on a development paradigm to the detriment of basic human and environmental well-being. Uh, so I suggest uh, Sri Lanka should specifically amend its constitution to include the right to clean and healthy environment in its third chapter. Uh, it should also go in parallel with the right to sustainable development. So uh, this is my end of presentation. Uh, so thank you very much th for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Rera.